Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video in today's Sekiro Shadows Die Twice video we are going to be doing or continuing with a detailed walkthrough starting from the Sunken Valley so we got to the Sunken Valley from Ashina Castle if you're not 100% sure how to do that make sure you go back and check out the Ashina Castle episode we've done once, once everything's uploaded I will be making a playlist now before we start, what I really want to do is actually uh, get some of these skill points spent before we lose all of them. I'm going to go for the Shinobi Eyes, which uh, which upgrades the Mikiri counter, which is obviously one of my favorite uh, type of skills on the game and one definitely one of the most useful. This will basically inflict more posture damage upon the enemy that we are doing, the Mikiri 2. And um, let's see, we've got, we already have this, we need five for that, what's this, you know, there's not much I'm too interested in, uh, let's get this actually, that's pretty decent, this is uh, Chase and Slice, so whenever we use um, certain tools, then if we press the attack button real quick, we'll actually dash towards them, do like a little strong attack, and it's actually really, really good. Right, so Sunken Valley. Before we go down, what we're going to do is go up uh, because there's going to be a little mini section behind here. Just hopefully we can uh, do it. Oh, that's my... Uh, wouldn't be an episode without the controller pad getting low on battery. So I, I should probably uh, should probably put that on charge. I hope, oh, wait, let me, let's just hope the sound isn't too loud over there. Right, but like I said, before actually going down to the Sunken Valley, we are going to take this side path up here because there's actually quite a few things this way. Now let me just uh, put my controller pad on charge. Now, we're here because if not, it's going to run out in the worst possible moment, I'm sure. Okay, there we go. Right, so here you want to just jump down. Uh, it's not really going to be, well, it's going to be this one enemy, I guess. And there could be one more, actually. Oh, no, this, okay, okay, okay. So I'm not sure 100% why these phantoms don't always spawn. And I'm not sure if it's because you do, like, some of the other, maybe it's if you got the mortal blade and come here, they'll spawn. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I've definitely been here before and these guys don't spawn. It could be because you've got the mortal blade beforehand, that's why they spawn. And they kind of try and protect it or something. A lot of people thought it was because if you picked up that prayer bead, um, technically you're looting the graves and then they spawn. But that's definitely obviously not the case as well because we only just picked it up. So I'm not actually sure what makes those phantoms spawn to be honest. But we're not really going to waste much time with them. We're actually going to come under this uh, little water. Uh, make sure you do pick up the prayer bead. That's one of the main reasons we actually came here. The other reason being this headless we are going to find just here. So as we're all headless, uh, let's go ahead and uh, equip at Divine Confetti and uh, Pacifying Agent. So remember Divine Confetti first, then the Pacifying Agent. I'm going to wait until we get a bit closer just to make sure because our Pacifying Agent really does run out quite quickly. And let's go ham on this guy. Try and get the parries if you can. Kind of hard to see sometimes, but definitely. And always remember to watch out. Uh, make sure your pacifying agent doesn't run out. Because if that runs out and you get hit like twice, <clears throat> you are pretty much dead. And as you can see, it's always useful to use pacifying agent anyway. Because that will actually reset the terror bar itself. Not only will it make you more resistant, it actually uh, does reset it. I'm kind of getting really low on health here. Come on. Headless is so random. and You never know if you're strong enough to kill a headless or not. Like, that's definitely something I've noticed. You never really notice if you're strong enough to kill. See, there we go. That was... um. Out of nowhere, actually. I thought I, I, I was kind of positive I still had Pacifying Agent, but I guess I should have used another one just to uh, just to get it, the build up to restart, and that was my mistake there. Wait too long. 
God damn it, they're so aggressive as well. It's like you'd think these type of enemies would give you a bit more leeway, as in when you can attack. But they really don't. They, they just go all out anyway. Can't see much here, matey boy. Come on, move it. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. We are going to die. We can use our last pacified agent. Not sure. This guy's really aggressive, by the way. Normally they're not this aggressive. I mean, come on, dude. I fought. Like, I have actually fought on um, Headless where I literally killed them without them even. Uh, like, without even having to parry. I literally just. Um, tanked through him at one point. But this guy's not having any of that. <laughs> this guy's like the most aggressive headless I've ever seen in my life. There we go. We got him though. We got him. That, that was pretty intense. It was pretty intense. Like I said, I'm not actually sure um, if certain headless are harder than other ones. Obviously, I know that some of them only have one health bar, specifically the ones underwater, or at least one of them underwater only has one health bar. I'm not sure if the rest of them actually have uh, different difficulties because it. I don't think so, but sometimes they just seem incredibly more aggressive. Some some of them. I remember the first headless I killed, which was the one near the outskirts, not on this uh, walkthrough, but I meant just in general in my existence. Um, I literally killed him without having to parry once. Sure, I I did take a few hits, but I really just tanked through it and got away with it quite easily actually. So it kind of makes me wonder if they actually do get harder or easier they could do or not i've never really looked into it that much I and mean, once you're at this point in the game if you've done everything i've done you should be strong enough to take him out just make sure you've got enough items because more than anything is about how you use the items so anyway now i've done that little back section with definitely worth it we got a prayer bead i believe that may actually yeah we've got four prayer beads now so we've got um the prayer bead we got the Gokens ability, Spiritful, so uh, that's two out of five Headless down. We have met another Headless, so we do know that there's, an, that there's another Headless. Uh, we will kill all of them, don't worry. <laughs> and technically we could go back and kill them now, but we'll, we'll wait until we actually kind of just go back to that area. So first over here we're going to take a left to go up. Uh, reason being, there is going to be a B, no, sorry, not a B, a, uh, a seed over this direction up here. So that's definitely something you want to pick up to get more uh, uses out of your gourds. It should be this item just here. There we go, a nice little seed. Pick up this, whatever the hell this is. Yellow gunpowder. Also a good upgrade material. I think we did leave an enemy alive. He hasn't really noticed we're here somehow yet. Well, he probably did, but he just lost us. Uh, now we're just going to return the way we came and this time we are going to head to the left and head downwards So uh, these enemies if they're on their own, they're incredibly weak and incredibly easy to take out so No trouble there pick up that And move on to the next area. There should be one item down here a few lizards So we'll just uh, watch out for those if you want to uh, Stick around and kill them. They're up to you but we're going to kind of move on. I don't want to hang around unnecessary areas uh, because this episode could be quite long if we do the entire Sunken Valley. Oh, okay, that was weird. Kind of thought we were going to get a death blow on that guy, but apparently not. So we're going to find a new type of enemy in this area. The enemy there next to the flames or next to whatever the hell that is. This is going to be a shotgun guy. Uh, it's very similar to the other guys, just a bit more resistant where he can kind of hit you with the weapon, do a side blow. Really easy to parry though. Just don't just don't get caught. I thought he was gonna die there. And that's the end of him. It's kind of just introducing you to the different types of enemies in the area. And uh, this guy just here is gonna give us a bit of backstory about the gun fort, which is the area coming up right now. Make sure you rest at this idol, since we are not gonna be Returning or anything, so don't worry about it. Uh, the enemies respawn, and now we're going to take a bit of a leap of faith down to this tree just here, and another one over to this area just here. Just don't, I really wouldn't recommend stopping in this area in general because um, there are going to be a lot of people trying to shoot you. This guy is uh, like, if you stand in front of him, you're not going to be in trouble or anything. Just don't don't move too far to any of the sides. 
So this guy is exactly the same as the other snake eyes, the snake eyes that we fought in the depth. So just, you know, you can get away with hitting him quite a lot, to be honest, just as soon as that red mark comes up, um, just back off. I figured that if you jump backwards, it always, uh, you always dodge it 100% of the time. So it's a pretty easy fight. I believe this is also a way of cheesing this guy out with the Ichimonji, um, the double Ichimonji attack. I believe you just do that, then parry, then do that, and then parry. And he doesn't really do anything else. But, um, yeah. yeah. It's really obvious when he's going to try and shoot you. Oh, no. Ooh. Ooh. Jumped a bit too late there. It doesn't kill us, though, luckily. I don't really want to get too close over there, to be honest, because um, that's where stuff... That's where you can probably start to get shot across the map. Hopefully he will come towards us and not make us go over there. Come on, mate. You can't get me from there. There we go. Okay, good. No, if you hide behind something there, or then he'll try and reposition. As soon as he figures out that he can't shoot you from wherever he's standing. Really likes that now. He's got me. He's got me once with that attack, and now it's just all he's going to be doing. Should be about done for. There we go. So we get another prayer bead. Maybe getting a lot of prayer beads. Fish for ash. And uh, down here there's going to be one item. But I recommend doing this as fast as possible. Because you will start to get shot across the map. Like so. God damn it. <laughs> I didn't really expect to die that quick in all fairness. I thought I thought it was going to take like one or two bullets and then get up. But no mind Jesus. That was a... Uh, that was an underrated thing. Anyway, just get that item if you can and get out of there. If not, don't worry about it too much. And now we're going to stick to the left hand side. So here it's actually really useful if you do have the umbrella. But um, there is, you can just run across this bridge. Like even if you don't have the umbrella, if you kind of zigzag, you're fine. Just watch out for the little gap in the bridge. Because I figure that with the umbrella, you're probably not going to see that gap. Uh, even running across is quite hard to see the gap. But um, anyway, kind of getting really low on health now. But once you're down here, you're relatively safe. You will have to take out a few enemies. So here, instead of continuing up to the left-hand side, you want to turn to the right. Watch out for the enemies. There's also going to be an enemy above us, so watch out. The only reason we're coming up here to the right is to get that item and you know take out these enemies so they stop uh, annoying us but once you've got that item there's nothing else in that direction from here you, you know yes you can grapple we already jumped not so much oh actually no my bad I mean you can grapple across there but there's not really much point I mean you I think you gotta do it from here actually so my bad but we're actually going to be getting to the other side of that area um, through this direction anyway so let's take a right first. These guys don't really know I'm here, so take that guy out, pick up this item. Uh, behind here, well, not even, well, we've already stepped on it, never mind. I mean, I was gonna do it, but I didn't I didn't actually expect them to be there that early. Uh, if you step on those, they, they don't do damage or anything, they just alert the enemies, so, yeah. Don't worry about it too much, there's not too many enemies around here. But we are gonna come, and want, come up here anyway and pick that up. And then we're just gonna jump back down pick up this just here and I think as far as items go oh I'm a shotgun guy here so watch out for him there we go there's going to be two more items just here so one's going to be up here on top of this thing and the other one's actually going to be, remember we was uh, trying to grapple across the other one, the swingy kind of one. That's where that would have led just here. So to pick the item up, but you don't have to worry about grappling. Now it's probably a good, um, a good stealth approach as well. But, uh, you know, you can just get it from there. There's going to be a few enemies here. You can probably backstab this guy if you're fast enough or miss him. What I'm actually going to do to play it safe or extra safe. I'm gonna actually go down here and rest 
because we do have an idol here just in case we do die since we haven't really got any um gourds left so i'm just going to come here we will we're going to go back there this is actually quite a good farm spot if you've got the smoke bomb uh jutsu so i'm actually going to just uh show it off a bit i guess if you got the smoke bomb jutsu you can do this then smoke bomb and then if you're fast enough you can backstab this guy and that's like an okay uh, farming uh, method for early mid game because now you just go well, you can kill this guy if you want you can now go back to the idol and just do it again especially if you're using like the Mibu balloons so you know if you're struggling for skill points and sen it's not a bad uh, spot I'm gonna change that ninjutsu back because I know I'm gonna forget I'm gonna go up to try and puppeteer somebody and then just throw a smoke bomb accidentally but anyway, once we've got those items, uh, what we're going to do is continue down here. We're going to find another mini boss here. There's going to be another centipede guy, just like in the uh, in the temple, in simple temple. Exactly the same move set, exactly the same everything. Very easy to kill. Just parry his attacks, and he basically uh, destroys his own posture bar. So. And really, you can just spam this parry button. You don't even have to learn anything. I mean, maybe if you're like doing the like no charm run or anything where you do take damage from blocks, then you should probably learn them. But yeah. anyway, once he's done, he's going to get another prayer bead, and we're going to get the large fan. And this is what's going to give us the abduction fan thing. The, remember the tool I was talking about um, for using on Cortado? That is what. Um, what we wanted so if you want to continue or f actually finish Kotaro's main side quest his personal side quest You want to l um, unlock that tool and go back to him and use it on him and that will send him to the hall of uh, Illusions and then you can finish the quest down get the special person for the secret ending. Oh, where am I going? From here. We actually want to go this way. I think yeah But like I said, we already sent Kotaro back to um, Anayama so First, we're going to take a right here. We can go left, but left will just take us back to the other area. First, and now the, the the path will split into two. First, we're going to go this way. It doesn't really matter which way you go first. Pick up these items. Watch out for the ambush from all the lizards. It would help if I could pick it up, but whatever, we did get poisoned. I really don't. I don't know why it does that way. It just won't let you pick up the item. Luckily, we have got a load of um antidotes and yeah what we picked up there another um are we still poisoned did i not use it i must have not used it there we go we picked up another prayer bead so we're like literally getting prayer beads left and right here uh if you come this way you get a divine confetti and i believe that's it if i'm not mistaken well you get a few divine confetti so it's definitely useful if you're looking for more of those to fight headless or the warriors but now anyway we're just going to head back this is where we came out, so now instead of heading right, we're going to head left. So jump, grapple, could be one item, yeah, there we go. Eva balloon, and uh, now we're just going to continue this way, and this will actually take us back to the idol from before. So here we're back at the idol. So now we're just going to head to where, the, where we fought the mini boss, and now we're actually going to head out of this gate here. So if you haven't, um, if you haven't beat Kanichiro and talked to uh, Kudo in the library, you won't actually have this key, so it kind of sucks. So here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to get the snake to spawn, which he should have spawned. He's just there, you can see him now. I want to try and get off the bridge if possible. There we go. Uh, the, the only reason I wanted to get off the bridge is to get this item here, because if not, uh, you'll just fall down. So, get that. And now, what? So, the snake's waiting for us in the water. So, we want to dive down into the water, underwater. And uh, if you stick to this path here and go all the way just here and above this item, where the red flowers are, you want to jump out of the water, you should be fine, and the snake won't be able to hit you. If you don't have the dive ability yet, then just go into the little cave in the middle of the lake. So anyway, once you've rest, once you've rested, uh, the snake will actually disappear, and you will be able to freely explore this area. 
Now, as far as items, I think all the items here in this area are underground, or not underground, sorry, uh, under the water. So uh, if you don't have the dive ability, then you won't be able to pick them up. I believe there's four, maybe five items. Pretty decent Bojan coin purse. Um, also a uh, scale. Okay, there's five. I believe there's also a fish or a carp around here as well. Not these ones, these the darker ones are kind of the the hostile ones, but I think there's at least one. I could be wrong, but I think there's at least one. Yeah, there we go. There could be more, I'm not sure. I think there's only one around here though. At most there's two, but I think there's only one. So once we've done that, we just want to continue back now to the idol. Because there's nothing else left for us to do. But however, now the snake is there. Uh, that means that we can now jump on him and kill him from Semple Temple. We'll be doing that at the end of this episode, hopefully. Uh, we'll actually get both of the snake livers or persimmons in this very episode. So that will advance the secret ending. Here we want to jump. I didn't really even see that. I didn't remember that monkey being there. But I'll pick that up. I'm going to try and remember all of the items are here. There's quite a, like, there's no really decent items here, but they're all a bit scattered. There's one there. I think there's one beside this thing. I think there's one below us near this statue, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Um, could be one in there. I'm not sure. Let me, let me just go quickly check. I need to make sure. Technically, this is the way up from the bottom. We will be going to the bottom very soon anyway. Uh, maybe there's not anything here. I mean, there's just the way up, if I'm not mistaken, from the bottom. Nah, we're, we're good. I think we've picked up the item so far. Oh, there's one. I knew there was one around here somewhere. Can we get back up here? Yeah, we can. <clears throat> I want that item. Um, as far as as far as the right hand side of the valley goes, I'm not. I think there's like one item. We'll pick that up in a second. Get this one. Watch out for these guys. These are the same type of uh, enemies that are on the roof of Bashina Castle. But when they're on when they're on their own, they're not really that big of a deal. Right, what's there an item? Um, that's not items. That's just emblems. Oh yeah, okay. So there's one here, and I think there's one to the right. Yeah, there's one to the right. Watch out for all these monkeys. There's like a massive group of monkeys here. And I don't know. You can kill them if you want. I just I just love doing that. And, uh, you know, you can then do like some area effect attack or whatever if you if you fancy it. Okay, there's another item up there I forget about apparently. I'm not sure if we can get back up there. Can we get back up there? We should be able to get back up there. I think you got... Yeah, okay, yeah. Do it from this side. Because technically, there this is the path you use to get across. Another one of these guys just hanging around. There we go. Okay, so um, yeah, once we once we've uh, got to the area of all the monkeys, you just want to grapple across to here, and then uh, go across here. And really, now with this idol, we're at the boss. As you can see down there, it's the guardian ape. But before doing the guardian ape, what we're actually going to do is uh, sort the persimmons out for the for the snakes and the uh, ending and special ending and all that. So around here we should actually see the NPC again. I can't remember exactly where she was but she was on one of these ledges. She could be at the top, maybe she's all the way at the top. She could be all the way at the top or is she around here? She's definitely around here somewhere. And maybe, maybe you have to do something for the spawn but basically you can you can get that uh, old woman NPC, the one that gives us all the clues to actually spawn around here. I should have jumped all the way down. Whatever made me thought that I could jump all the way down, I do not know. You actually want to grapple. And then grapple again. I think you can fall from here if you want. And what we're going to do, because we want to kind of go backwards, we're going to just drop down here. Obviously this lake will poison you if you stay in it too late. I think that goes without saying after playing from software games. Pick up these items. Uh, did I? Yeah, okay. I'm just making. I need to make sure that. Yeah, okay. We had the uh, 
the puppeteer ninjutsu because we will be using that again very soon so to our right we have the cave we actually want to go into and there's actually going to be a shop there as well but first we're just going to go to this dead end and sort sort the items out there's going to be a few items here maybe even a prayer bead if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong about that though uh, just watch out for the white monkey with dual wielding so it's absolutely insane damage he does remember um firecrackers are your best ally for monkeys especially just to get the other monkeys out of the way mainly and this guy's quite uh vulnerable to them you can kind of just spam him since he doesn't have much of a cooldown probably maybe no cooldown but yeah monkeys firecrackers are incredibly useful and the other one should actually die in like one hit that guy kind of killed me or hit me while he died this monkey with a gun come on mate what are you doing i'm not even sure if the monkeys can get poisoned or not to be honest a lot of the enemies can get poisoned if they sit in the lake too long i think this guy's just basically wanting me to uh sit in the lake all right maybe there wasn't a bead I, I could have sworn there was a bead or a seed around here, but maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. There's one more item around here, though. Which is going to be over here. Am I going to make that without getting poisoned? It's going to be close. There we go. Luckily, we do have plenty of antidotes if necessary. Okay, apparently there wasn't a seed or a bead around here. Never mind. My bad. Uh, but anyway, you know, we wanted to pick all the items up anyway. Isn't they're not items, no, they're just emblems. Come on, matey. There we go. Right now, it's time to head into the cave. Uh, there's a shop here. I don't think it's got anything interesting. Like, really interesting anyway. Let me just check. We've got some pellets. I mean, he does sell two dragon blood droplets. And, um... This is pretty interesting because it's... It's like a gourd that refills... Uh, but like just anti-poison it's kind of cool to have multiple types of gourds I guess now we've got a few upgrade materials and uh, anti-poison uh, antidotes right um, let's head into the cave now as far as items go there was one or two items around here one was here the other one just watch out for, like this is the only item this is the only place in the game where you've got these weird enemies coming out of the walls so just watch out for them there was a few items in here. I think that's all kind of to the right. There was, there was definitely items up top as well. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Three items all the way up here. Watch out for that guy. Well, there's multiple of them. You can try and... I think you can kill them. I'm not really even sure if you can kill these guys or not. I've never tried killing them. There's going to be another item over here on this ledge just here. And there's going to be one final item below the little bridge thing just over here as far as items go I think that's it now after I'm um, just going under that bridge you want to stick to the left hand side you want to get up this little come on mate you can do it took way longer than it should have done but um, anyway and I'm uh, just going to jump down here I don't think there's any more items no we're good for items right now here you can actually skip the snake if you like there's two ways of doing it the legit way which we're going to be doing is jumping down there and uh using a, a puppeteer ninjutsu on him so it distracts the snake but you can do this get him to attack I'm probably gonna regret doing this yeah i know it. it's quite hard to do but if you get get him to do that hide behind here instead of running back like i did you can run across the bridge, then jump to the left, and then grapple, but it's kind of difficult to do. I did do it in one of my videos, I can't really remember what video it was, and I think it was the 100% walkthrough, or that, as in the 100% exploration walkthrough, I think I did it. But yeah, I just recommend just doing it normal, like, a, like the game kind of wants you to do it, so just go up, backstab this uh, monkey, ninjutsu, puppeteer ninjutsu, and uh, just wait for a bit. You will now go up there, and as soon as the snake uh, moves towards him, you just want to grapple up there. So, here we go. And just walk in the building. And it's as simple as that. There's no need to uh, make it more difficult. So, here we are going to find our first viscera. Persimmon. 
liver, whatever you want to call it. And this is one of the two we need for the secret ending. Now you can't get back out of here, no matter how hard you try. So we're actually going to have to grapple up here. And this is actually going to take us to, you can get that item from here. And this is actually going to take us all the way back to the uh, little cave thing that you find in the depth. Remember this place? This is where the other snake eyes was. Um, that's where you are now. And that's the only way out. Uh, before we go and finish this episode by killing the uh, boss, what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to go to... We're going to go back to Semple Tempo. Uh, no, I, I went the wrong one. We don't actually have to go to Semple Tempo. There's actually the idol we unlocked. Um... Basically, we want to go back to the place after we jump across the kite or after we jump or grapple across the kite, which we did in last episode. But I remember, as soon as we teleport, I remember that you actually unlock another, um, another uh, idol. I'm not sure where it counts. Sunken Valley Cavern, that's it. It's still part of Semple Temple, apparently. I actually thought it was part of Sunken Valley, but it's not. So we can just do here. Uh, now we can kill the other snake and the only the only way to make the snake actually spawn here is by getting him to break the bridge um, in Sunken Valley which is obviously what we just done so once that's happened you can come back here and uh, jump on top of the snake from here as you can see last time he wasn't here now we can just jump on his head and bam now make sure you do press the second R1, because if not he will eat you. And now we have killed the uh, second and final. Well I mean like the other, the, we don't actually kill the other snake, we just get it. But um, that's one snake dead anyway. Uh, and from here, if you actually notice, we're actually the other side of the bridge that broke. So... You know, it's kind of interesting if anybody is wondering if there's actually a way to get across the bridge. This is the other side and this is the river or the lake be below us uh, where he was trying to kill us just now. So uh, yeah, there's actually going to be a few items around here in this cave. I think the thing is, if I'm not mistaken, if once you leave this area now, there's actually no way you can get back here. I could be wrong, but I don't think there's actually any way back as, uh, once you leave now. So just uh, keep that in mind. But, um, oh wait, what am I doing? PS4's starting to make a great load of noise. But now we're here, what we're gonna do is, um, what I'm gonna do is, before we forget, actually give the persimmons or the visceras to uh, the divine child to advance the secret ending a bit more. Because I'm bound to forget at one point. And remember, you should be able to do this, um, you should be able to do all of this uh, pretty much whenever you want. The next step after this, you will have to wait until we kill Owl at the top of Ashina Castle, though, if I'm not mistaken. But um, this part, the Persimmon part, you can do right now. So let's go to the Inner Sanctum in uh, Semple Temple, since that's where the Divine Child should now be. Obviously, you will only be able to give in the um, the snake livers after you have spoke to her in the Hall of Illusions and uh, gave her the other chapter from the dead monk in the cave. And she will actually ask for the persons. So you want to give it to her. Give them to her because there's two of them. And that's it. Uh, now, if... I don't think you have to travel. Maybe you do have to travel. Let's just try and rest. I think you probably do have to travel for this. But she no okay we don't okay she now she'll um lock herself in and we can eavesdrop on her but nothing's happening and that's pretty much it now for the final part we actually just have to beat owl once we beat owl and done that we should be able to now get the item off of her that you actually have to give kudo at the end of the game so we'll be doing that once we once we kill owl <clears throat> and really that's all there is to do in this episode I think just now go ahead and kill the guardian ape which um, is kind of an easy boss 
on the second phase. Like personally, I have a really hard um hard time on the first phase, but on the second phase, I don't have no like no problem. But um yeah, so remember, Firecracker is very very good against him. Uh, also, um, anything flame wise. So if you if you've got oil and flame vent, uh, that's pretty decent against this guy as well. You can use that. Uh, anything to do with flames is uh, just really really good against him. So you know, firecrackers I believe do have um, like a twenty second cooldown, like on a lot of uh, bosses. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, makes sense. After the flame crackers, uh, just don't forget that he's going to come tumbling down on top of you. It's something I always forget on this boss. I'm just trying to see what kind of uh, cooldown he's got, but I think it is about around, it seems around about 20 seconds. Like I said, this boss would be a lot easier with the flame vent. We do have the flame vent and oil, so you know, we could just do that. Watch out for that, an easy attack to dodge. In general, the first phase um, is like less punishing if you do get hit, but I just find, um, I just find the second phase a lot pre more predictable. Probably use a firecracker. Yeah, there we go. Come tumbling down. And he should be pretty much done. There we go. Right now, second phase. Second phase is a bit definitely um, less forgiven if you do get hit. But I find it a lot more predictable. So, really, on second phase, um, he's only got like three or four different types of attacks. And they're very, very uh, predictable. So let's just wait until Miyazaki throws us a bit. Okay, so um, he's got, I mean, that's just whatever, you just jump over it. Now, this is the attack we're actually interested in, but I'm only really interested in it if we um, parry the first attack. Once, If you don't parry the first attack, then it kind of, I get lost. I don't really know what to do, but um, jump over that. This is the other attack that he does. Like uh, it's, that attack's really annoying because it looks like he's gonna hit you, and then it's just a waste of time. <laughs> She's just like really hard to parry just because it's not gonna hit you. Here he comes again. Now this one, the big tower in, is the one you're interested in parrying because if you parry that, you're gonna get a lot of hits on him. And uh, after that, if you want to try and dodge this attack, don't like don't jump, just run. This one, you just want to jump over to the left. Probably to the right as well. That one. I'm uh, not really sure what the attack that is. I can really only tell. The, the attack I'm really interested in is the one that he kind of... Uh, this one. If you parry the two first ones, you can get two hits in. Or one hit in. And then guarantee parry the big tower in one. And then you're going to get loads of hits in. That's the, that's the best attack he can do in my opinion. And after that normally he does the, uh, the AoE attack. Jump over this one. I mean, the best thing is probably to keep your distance. Not too far away, but, you know. This one I like. The inverted one, I like to call it the invert. I don't know why, it just looks like it's going to do something else. And then the tower. Just parry all three attacks and... Guaranteed, um... Jump over this one. That's really all this phase is. This one's actually a attack you just have to jump over though. Like, I don't think I've ever been hit by that. Because if you do try and keep your distance, it's... Like, it's not got an incredible range. It's kind of like a scary attack when he jumps up there. But all you have to do is just jump, just in case. But he's never actually been close enough to... Um, do it. Or to actually hit me, so I'm gonna jump over this. Harry, jump. He does get a bit more aggressive, I would say, when he's about to die. I'm not 100% sure, but I would say he gets a bit more aggressive anyway. Jump. And jump and attack. Got a bit carried away there. Don't know why we've got so much items equipped still. Do the inverted? No, he doesn't really like to do the inverted, does he? Come on, mate, do the inverted. There we go. There's that inverted. 
after the second one. Oh, we didn't. Oh, he missed. What the hell? <laughs> that was not supposed to happen. It's kind of annoying when you know the good attack and he misses that attack completely. You don't even get the parry. It's like, come on, mate. It's like the only good attack you're doing to me and you miss. Oh, well. Come on, dude. He's doing a predictable attack. Get this over and done with. There we go. Now he is... I mean, I'm not going to say he's dead forever, but, you know. The boss battle is done, let's just say. But we'll be talking about this boss a bit later on, I guess. Though it's kind of weird, because we do have the Mortal Blade on us right now, and we could just end it, but I guess we... We don't know about it yet, I guess. Oh, actually, before I rest them at that em emblem, um, idol, there's actually, if you've got the dive ability, uh, also, I think we just got, yeah, we just got our final tool. If we got a dive ability, you can actually dive down over here in this little pond, and there's going to be a, I'm not sure what it was. Maybe precious bait. Precious bait. You kind of get, like, there's a few broken things here. Um, that's actually from a later area, and it kind of makes sense, but we'll be talking about that a bit later on, once we get to that area. So yeah, um, final idol down here in the sunken valley. Rest, and we are done. I mean, we're going to get the other very important item. Remember, we already got the uh, stone, and now we are going to get the flower, which is just here. The lotus of the palace. And uh, next episode, we are going to be heading to, or heading back to Ashina Castle, because uh, stuff's changed. So yeah, guys, uh, if you've got any questions, please leave them down below. Uh, if I did happen to miss anything, let me know in the comments. And yeah, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please click like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time, guys. If this guide was helpful, please consider joining as a member by using the join button or using the link in the description. This will support the channel, allowing me to get even more games to do, even more video guides. Thanks for the support. Take care, guys.